This is the infrastructure security uh, session. We are going to have four great presentations. Please uh, remember that we have 12 minutes per talk and then three, uh, three minutes for, uh, uh, for questions. We are already one minute behind. So let's, uh, let's start. So the first talk for today is uh, Space Odyssey, an experiment software security analysis of satellites. And Johannes uh, Wilbold is going to present it. Thank you. Yeah, hello and welcome. <laughs> hello and welcome, everybody. As already introduced, my name is Johannes Wilbold, and today I'm presenting to you Space Odyssey and Experimental Security Analysis of Satellites. Satellites are an essential part of our modern lives as they provide many vital services, such as telecommunications for TV, internet, and soon also mobile phones, global positioning services such as GPS and Galileo, Earth observation services for mapping, agricultural and weather forecasting. And additionally, they also provide scientific research opportunities and technology testing. These services leverage the space segment, which consists of one satellite, or in the case of constellations such as Starlink or OneWeb, multiple satellites, where each of the satellites talk to each other via the inter-satellite link. The space segment is thereby controlled by the ground segment, which usually consists of large antennas and a team of satellite operators. These satellite operators have a dual task of one, operating the satellite, uh, where they use telecommands, which are uplink traffic from the operators to the satellite, that instructs the satellite on new operations to be executed and new flight plans. Contrary to the satellite, emits telemetry back to the operators, in informing about the current state of the satellite and execution state of operations. The other task of the ground segment is to uplink the actual satellite service itself to the user segment. The user segment consists of all user devices, such as GPS receivers or internet receivers, that actually receive the satellite service that is upcasted by the ground segment and received by the user segment. Although satellite security research has picked up traction in the recent years, most of the research has so far focused on the link security between the user segment and satellite segment, or space segment and ground segment. And most of the security focus, uh, most of the security research focus was focused towards securing, for example, internet connections via satellite connections. However, few research has been conducted on the security of the space segment itself, and even and there is no academic research on the security of the on the security of the firmware of the satellites itself. To change this, we conducted a security analysis of three satellites, where we first got a security, got a firmware of the satellites itself from our partners and reverse engineered the binary blobs that we received. We did this to get an initial insights on how satellites work in general and how these specific satellites work. Additionally, we also wanted to find out which security vulnerabilities and security threats we can generally find in satellites. We used these insights to design a developer survey that we distributed to professional satellite developers. These developers include developers from space agencies, from universities, and commercial companies. We use these results that we received from the survey to challenge our initial insights and conclude all our insights from our case studies and our developer survey into a threat taxonomy. And the following, I'll be going through the threat taxonomy in a top-to-bottom top approach, followed by one firm analysis, uh, highlights from an ESA satellite, the European Space Agency, and finally, I will highlight two key questions from the developer survey. Our threat taxonomy starts at the highest level with attacker goals, the goals attackers generally want to achieve on a satellite. For this, we consider three attacker goals, and the first one is denial of service. Denial of service attack is here any attack that prevents the satellite from carrying out its intended service. Next, we consider Next, we consider malicious data interaction, where attackers somehow maliciously interact with data on the satellite. For example, considering all Earth observation satellites, we consider that an attacker might be interested in introducing or removing image artifacts from the satellite before they are linked down to Earth. Finally, we consider seizure of control attacks, where an attacker takes full control of a satellite and potentially even blocks the initial operators from taking the control of the satellite again. To understand where these attacks can be achieved on a satellite, we first need to understand how a satellite is generally com composed of. Gen is generally, a satellite consists of a bus system and a payload system. The payload system con contains all the elements that is used to carry out the intended purpose of the satellite. For example, for telecommunication satellites, we find large radio frequency equipment, while for Earth observation satellites, the payload is usually a large camera. 
The bus system is used for all the components that is used to keep the satellite alive in space and to provide electricity and information to the payload. The, the bus system thereby consists of an attitude determination and control system, which attitudes the satellites toward Earth and Sun, an electrical power supply system, which consists of solar panels and a battery, a command and data handling system, which is a microcontroller that runs the actual firmware that controls the satellite, and finally, a communication system, which is usually a UHF or S-band antenna that receives the previously mentioned telecommands and sends out new telemetry. To take full control over the satellite, an attacker has to control the command and data handling system as it exercises control over all parts of the satellite. Contrary to execute a denial of service attack or malicious data interaction, control over the payload itself might be enough as it controls the payload equipment such as cameras and radio frequency equipment. In the next part of our, of our taxonomy, we list individual components and map out the tech path through the satellite. In this example, for example, an attacker might be able to compromise parts of the communication system to, forward it, to let the traffic forward it to the command and data handling system. From there on, an attacker might be able to gain arbitrary code execution on the satellite and might be able to interact with control data such as cryptographic secrets on the satellite to gain the initial attacker goals such as seizure of control. In parallel, an attacker might also be able to gain an initial foothold on a payload of the satellite itself, such as through payload communication system or payload data handling system. From there on, the previously mentioned denial of service or payload data interaction attacks can be carried out. In our taxonomy, we then go to the next step to list the individual threats of the satellite itself, such as, for example, bypass access control on the communication system, vulnerable telecommands on the command and data handling system, and dangerous telecommands, which are any telecommands that provide the attacker with, with, with leverage over the satellite, which wasn't meant in that way before. We, in our paper, we list many more vulnerabilities um, that are beyond the scope of this presentation, so feel free to consult the paper. One interesting feature of our taxonomy is that it also accounts for lateral movement within the satellite. So for example, if an attacker gains an initial foothold in the payload, there is a way to get to the actual bus system through a bus payload link. A bus system always provides data via request to the payload system, for example, the current state of the attitude, how much power is still there, and on the current state of the orbital plane. So these interactions might be vulnerable and an attacker might be able to escalate an attack laterally within the satellite from the payload to the bus system. There are many more aspects that our taxonomy includes, such as interfaces, which we use to model attacker models, which we conclude to four attacker models in our paper. And if you're interested in them, you can consult the paper. In the, uh, there is some stuff missing. I'm not sure if the PDF is not working. Um, in the next step, I'll, we analyze an European Space Agency satellite called OPSAT. OPSAT was launched in 2019 and is an open research satellite. Basically, anybody can write experiments in a Java framework, send it to ESA, and ESA will upload it onto the satellite to carry out the experiment. To do this, ESA provides the ESA satellite provides a large variety of peripherals, such as, as an X-band antenna, S-band antenna, optical receivers, SDRs, and many more. All of these components make up the payload of the satellite. In our attack, we focus on a bus system, which is seen in the upper part of the image. The bus system consists of the previously mentioned components centered around the com command and data handling system. Using our taxonomy, we can derive an attack model of the satellite that, will, that lists all potential attack paths through the satellite. We take this by using individual components from the taxonomy and arranging it in a way that fits the initial satellite model shown on the previous slide. And then this attacker model shows all attack paths, such as, for example, the previously mentioned lateral movement from the payload data handling system to the bus payload link to the command and data handling system. When fully mapping this out, the entire model is a lot more complex and can be found in the paper. However, in this example, we are focusing on our attack path that we took through the satellite, uh, which gains in where the attacker gains initial foothold on a communication system, proceeds the attack to the command and data handling system, and finally takes full control over the satellite. We did this by first finding a bypass access control, which was uh, rather simple, as there was simply missing access control on the satellite in the first place. Next, we were able to execute arbitrary telecommands on the satellite and were able to exploit vulnerable telecommand on the satellite using a stack buffer overflow. In the next step, we were able to gain arbitrary code execution on the satellite as missing operating system defenses such as ASLR and missing firmware defenses such as stack cookies uh, did not prevent any 
exploitation of the SegPower bar overflow to an arbitrary code execution. From there on, we were able to execute arbitrary actions on the satellite and take full and seize full control of the satellite. In the next step, we we present our survey where we surveyed 19 professionals from space agencies, universities, and commercial companies. These 19 professionals answered questions about themselves, their personal views on security and satellites, and about 17 satellites that they have worked on. 10 of these satellites are in the small satellite category, while seven of them are in the larger category. Generally, satellite weight is associated with the complexity of the project, as generally a larger weight translates to higher launch costs and higher launch costs to higher project costs. The, we, we made our survey fully anonymous, as that which comes with the drawback that we are not entirely sure which of the satellites have been surveyed, but bring, gets the participants of the survey a sense of security that they can speak freely about all the information that they, that they gave us. I'm now going to highlight two of the key questions from the survey. The first one, are any measures de to deployed to prevent third parties from controlling your satellite? And initially high number of nine, for, for an initially high number of nine satellites, it was stated that there is, in fact, a measures to deploy to prevent third-party access, while only three said no. However, also notice that five of them said that they prefer not to say or simply don't know. And when, when, when we take a closer look at the nine, for the nine satellites where it was mentioned that there are defenses, the, there is indeed a grimmer picture. The next question was, what measures are deployed to prevent third parties from controlling your satellite? And there from the nine satellites, only for three was answered access control, and only for four, encryption. A higher number said that special knowledge about protocols, frequencies and modulations, and s similar things are required. Also, some mentioned that even a special permit would be needed to talk to the satellite, which they apparently regard as security measure. So it really goes to show that security by obscurity is still very much prevailing in the satellite community. As most of, as only for 17, from 17 satellites, it was only stated for three that is in fact access control. Concluding our talk, we presented a satellite threat taxonomy that allows for individual satellites to derive attacker models and threat models. We, in our paper, we presented the security analysis of three satellites. We only highlighted one here due to time restrictions. And we did a survey amongst professional satellite developers to see how far our, our insights from three satellites translate to the thousands of satellites that are up in space. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm now open to questions. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much for a great talk. Uh, let's see, do we have questions? Hi, uh, nice talk. So the security community has for a long time simply assumed that they can do updates easily and if the updates require additional hardware like memory or processor speed, that's okay. And this obviously isn't true for satellites. Are, do you have any lessons that you can, that you observe that how people should be designing uh, security for satellites or at least is there a thing or could you re-architect existing satellites to be more secure? So this is indeed pretty difficult. I mentioned that, for example, many state-of-the-art defenses such as ASLR and similar things are missing. But when talking to the actual developers of the satellites, it's not as easy as implementing or doing some switch and then it's magically enabled. Usually they use very bare-bone operating systems where it's not easy to implement security. So, so far we have mostly seen that implementing security means serious coding efforts to implement these measures themselves, as they, for example, don't want to put Linux operating systems, which brings these features um, by design onto satellites, just because nobody can review the code and these people really would like to review the operating systems even. Um, so that's pretty hard. Regarding updates, um, updates on satellites are often pretty difficult. For example, in university satellites, they have rather low frequency, a lot, rather low uh, transmission rates of like, for example, nine kilobits per second, which you can only do for like 10 minutes until the satellite already crossed the horizon. So you can try th three times a day, 10 minutes at like nine kilobits a second to upload a multi-megabyte um, firmware image, which takes days or even weeks. So updates itself are actually pretty difficult um, and they really would like not to do it. <laughs> Um, because, well, stuff can break, it takes a long time, and yeah. Uh, any more questions? Hey, uh, thanks for the presentation, it was very interesting. 
Uh, I do wonder, like, uh, the survey you did, was it only for the student or the university satellites and public satellites, or also, like, I'm assuming, like, for the defense satellites or, like, the private satellites, there will be more encrypted communication and a little bit more security will be implemented in those compared to, well, the student and the university satellites. Yeah, that's a fair assumption. Um, one of the satellites that we actually analyzed was from Airbus Space and Defense, and we also found several vulnerabilities there, but it, we should also mention that they do, in fact, have, for example, encryption on the uplink, but no authentication. Um, so something, but also something missing. Um, our survey covered universities, space agencies, and commercial companies. But we're not sure which companies and if they are from the defense sector and what kind of the European Space Agency they answered it for. So, um, yeah. OK, thank you so much. We have 10 more seconds, so I won't give you another question. But thank you All again. Right, thank you. Uh -huh.